Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com. Here with a really handy, handy little two-disc set here um, that got, ooh, three stars in the Penguin Guide. Oh, you got the Penguin Seal of Approval. Well, I'm giving it the, the Barnyard Owl Seal of Approval for doing bird seals. It's Vaughn Williams, complete concerti, sort of, kind of. Um, not exactly, but almost. We'll get to the exception in a second. But this is these are the couplings from the Bryden Thompson um, LSO Vaughn Williams Symphony Cycle. And they have quite nicely been stripped out and offered separately. And it's actually a very good idea because there's lovely music here that a lot of which is not terribly well known. Vaughn Williams wasn't known as a concerto guy. He really wasn't. He didn't write any major violin concerti. I mean, he did write a couple, but they're not like big pieces. And he didn't write um, like lots of them. He did write one piano concerto, which is a masterpiece. Actually, it's wonderful. And it's here in a very good performance. But let's go through the discs one by one, because there's also some other stuff here. It's just a very nice thing to have. If you're a Vaughn Williams person, it sort of fills and patches things, especially if you'd never got the Bryden Thompson Symphony Cycle originally on individual discs, when you could get all this stuff separately. I mean, you know, coupling wise with the actual symphonies. <laughs> Itchy. Okay, we have the Concerto Grosso for String Orchestra, which is a busy little piece. And it's, you know, sort of Vaughn Williams in neoclassical mode, but it's quite charming, followed by the Oboe Concerto. Now, I have an issue with this performance. The oboist is David Theodore. I remember exactly when this came out, exactly to like the minute this is, let me see what the actual recording date was. What did they tell us? I'm, I'm sure they do. I mean, they have dates in the back, but they're, they're sort of clumped together. So let me see if I can find it. I eh, can't find the exact date for this one, but it was 87, 88, 89. It was in there. I was on WQXR's TV show, First Hearing, with George Jelinek, um, which was a program where we listened to and reviewed new releases. And I knew exactly what this was because I was expecting it. I knew it was coming as part of this series. So when I heard it, I was ready to identify it immediately. That was no problem. But my partner on the panel, one of, one of them anyway, there were a couple, was the conductor Antonio de Almeida, who after this show became a, a good friend of mine because I, I had just met him there. And his opinion of this was actually exactly my opinion, which is why I liked him, which is that the piece itself is not one of Vaughn Williams' stronger works. It's very pastoral, somewhat formless. I mean, uh, Tony Antonio called it a pastoral divagation that has no form about the first movement, which is what we heard. But what really bothered both of us was that the recording, the sonics were so focused on the oboe. And an oboe is not an instrument you want to hear up close. I'm sorry, my friends, the oboist, it just isn't. And you heard lots of clickety, clickety, click of the keys. And 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 Antonio said, Maestro de Almeida, if you want to call him that, said, you should never hear metal clicking on metal when the oboe section is playing. And he's right. And you do. You hear this breathy, clicky. I don't know why they did that. I really don't. It doesn't make any sense because an oboe is a very piercing instrument. You can put it well inside the string orchestra and it will sound lovely. We'll hear it beautifully. You know this from all of those handle works that have violins and oboes doubling. And you can tell exactly when the oboes are there and when they're not. So this is the one dud in this set, actually. It's a pretty piece, but it is kind of shapeless and in this performance kind of irritating. So there you go. Then you get the Concerto Academico, which is for violin and strings in D minor, which is also another neoclassical kind of work, which is why it's called Academico. It means academic like the Veracini, you know, Concerti Academici or Sonata Academici. It means, you know, scientifically structured, put together and Baroque style, sort of, kind of, I think, maybe, I don't know. Anyway, that's what it's called. Um, and then we have the Tuba Concerto with Patrick Harold Tuba. Great piece. The best tuba concerto out there. Not that there are all that many, mind you. And then we've got two hymn tune preludes. And that's all on disc one. Whoa. Now, disc two has the Lark Ascending, which you have to have 400,000 billion times in any Von Williams collection, with Michael Davis. It irritates the hell out of me, frankly. I think it's just annoying, but some people love it. It is pretty. 
It's terribly pretty. It's so cute and darling and adorable. It makes my skin crawl. But, you know, it's still a fine piece. And then we've got uh, the Piano Concerto with Howard Shelley. Piano Concerto is marvelous. It's so different from most of the other works here. I mean, the Tuba Concerto is a little bit similar because it's a Tuba Concerto. It's got to have some, like, punch. You know what I mean? Um, you know, so much of this music is just lovely and pretty and lyrical. But the Piano Concerto, it has bite. It has cojones. Yes, it has a fuga chromatica. You know, it's 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 nice and chunky and clunky. I love it. And then finally, the part well, it's not finally the partita for double string orchestra, which is which is quite a bit of fun. Another neoclassical effusion. And lastly, toward the unknown region, which is hardly a concerto. It's for chorus and orchestra, and it's absolutely beautiful. So it's a very nice collection, except for that oboe concerto. I mean, the Lark Ascending is very well done. Whether I like it or not is irrelevant because, you know, it's up to you. But, you know, that's just my opinion. The one thing that they could have had on here, because I know they have one, um, is the romance for harmonica. It would be so cool to have this with Terry Riley, I believe. Um, I think he recorded it for Chandos. Somebody did it for Argo or Chandos, but I'm pretty sure it's Chandos. I think they had that. There's also the suite for viola and, and, and chamber orchestra. They've got that, too. Um, I believe, but on earlier Chandos recordings, not by Bryden Thompson, they're by other people that would have extended this thing past, of course, just two CDs. And it would have made it more complicated than just doing couplings that originally appeared with the symphonies. But there could have been more. And if you're going to put the Lark Ascending on a disc that purports to be about concerto, you should have the romance for harmonica, right? All right. Never mind. Maybe I'm totally crazy and they don't have one. But um, I, I, I know they've got a couple more of these things. I know it for a fact. So, I mean, they were in my Vaughn Williams pile in the overflow room, weren't they? Some of those things. Anyway, this is really nice. I mean, I, I, I'm just bitching pointlessly. It's really, really a nice two-disc set um, that will fill out your Vaughn Williams collection quite, quite amply and in good value and with basically very good performances. So give it a shot if you're looking for some you know, Vaughn Williams patching and plastering that you need to do to round out your collection. Keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.